switch over to the next tab, which is my calendars tab. So this is how we're navigating. Again, my dashboard, my calendar, then we've got contacts. We sort of move across the different tabs here. So really similar to your Stage 100, when you open up customer maintenance, you have a bunch of tabs. When you open up um, any task, it's all tab orientated. How I navigate through the system is also straightforward. I can click on my tabs. If there's a recent activity, I can go through my recents. You also have back and forth buttons just like the internet. So navigating through the system is very, very straightforward. My calendar here, this is completely integrated with Outlook. So what that means is regardless of where you create your appointments, whether you start them in uh, Outlook, if that's where you constantly keep your tasks, absolutely, or whether you start to use Sage CRM and the workflow and the calendar tools available within Sage CRM, regardless of what you do, it's going to show up in both places. Now, tasks and appointments, same rules apply. The, the, the bi-directional, real-time uh, information sync, so we're not pushing and pulling data. It's actually connected using Microsoft Exchange. If you don't have Exchange, it's not required. Uh, there's different options for that as well. But just know this is immediately wherever appointments are set up, they show up in all places. So appointments, again, are anything that has a start time, and tasks are anything that have an end date. Now on our SageGem community website, there's a lot of details on time management, organization skills, um, prioritization, and a lot of different teachings are out there, Franklin Covey, is one, you know, Zig Ziglar, there's a lot of people out there with time management expertise and uh, scenarios, tips and tricks. So all of those can be incorporated into Sage CRM. Let's take a look at one of these appointments back on Tuesday. When I hover over it, it tells me who it's with, Clint Clements, 3G Homes. I can log in, and this is just our default appointment screen. So I could actually tag this and say it was actually about a specific opportunity or case, perhaps the order or quote. And you'll notice it's Susan May and Brian Little involved in this appointment. Now, I can add anyone else in the organization. I could also um, add resource rooms if I need to book a meeting room, London meeting room. That doesn't sound half bad. Let's go ahead, and again, you can see everyone's availability. Now, based on permissions as well, when you hover over a grayed out appointment, it'll either give you the details, or if you don't have access to that person's details, you'll just see that they're busy. This is the same way to schedule as we do in Outlook. You also have the private option. So if this was a private meeting, we'll keep it on our calendar, we'll mark it private, and no one else will be able to see the details. Obviously, they'll be able to see you're unavailable because whether that 5 a.m. is private, you know, whether it's a personal meeting or a company meeting, you're still busy. It's still 5 a.m. and you're still unavailable. So again, still respecting privacy and making sure we're hiding all those details. Um, very powerful calendaring opportunities with SageGM. I'm just going to hit cancel here, and we'll go back to our calendar tab. Now. Again, depending on how people view, you do have the month, day, month, and year. So depending on how detailed we want to get, you've got a full calendar view. Now with Sage CRM, because we want to, as Adrian mentioned, we want to get away from the this independent silo of information. We want to get away from running a database locally that no one else can access. And the idea behind getting into a centralized data location is now we can start to share information. So as I mentioned, I'm logged in as Susan May, who happens to be the administrator, so she has access to everything. But I could also take a look at Brian Little's calendar, see what he's doing for the day. If I needed to take a look at, again, anyone else, administrator, the meeting rooms, we can take a look on an employee by employee basis and see what's happening. Okay, this is very helpful too when it comes to a team view. I'm going to hop over to Team CRM. I see my team calendar and there's a lot going on. We can go on team by team basis, but again, 
if, for example, Brian calls in sick for the day, I can go to his appointments and I can automatically reassign them. Here's Brian. Okay, he's supposed to call in this lead. You know what? He's out sick. I'm going to send this over to Susan, reassign it. When I click Save, Susan gets notified. It'll pop up on her workstation. She could receive an email or she could receive a text message, depending on the best method of communication. So once we start reassigning, again, it's a powerful tool from a team perspective, so nothing falls through the cracks. Everything's getting followed up on. But again, from an organization and time management perspective, making sure we're accomplishing all our tasks in a very uh, efficient, efficient manner. All right, so that's our team CRM. We'll hop back to my CRM. And you'll notice Susan May with her appointments and her tasks. She does have quite a few outstanding tasks here. Uh, she hasn't quite been following up. We can have a number of different things happen as well. So each CRM does have a powerful workflow engine where everything can be either click related or date and time related. So for example, this phone call that never get made that was ever made to follow up on the new quote. We could either automatically have this reassigned or uh, we could have management notified. So a number of different options when tasks don't actually get followed up on. We could also give the person an extra, an extra day. In this case, we'll just push the, the call out. And now all of a sudden, it's no longer expired. So easy enough again from time and productivity. <laughs>